coverage of this year's Tour de France, what great memories Alp Duas left us with yesterday. We've moved on now, of course, we're at Villard de Lens, the next battleground of the race, the Mountain Time Trial. And we're standing here at Cote 2000. It's a vicious climb up to this point. All of the top riders setting off at the back end of the field, as tradition dictates today, and they haven't arrived up here yet. Let's look back at one thing that happened yesterday on Alp Duez, the tactics amongst the Bernesto team riders Miguel Injurain and Pedro Delgado. Injurain lost all hope of winning the Tour because of an unselfish piece of riding for Pedro Delgado. Here's Paul. The big Alpine stage to Alp Duez was the day when the big stars, especially Pedro Delgado, wanted to try and pull back the time they lost on the first day. To pull back so much time, they needed to blow the race apart. Delgado's faithful lieutenant, Miguel Indiran, was launched into the lead by the Bernesto team. Indiran, whose high placing overall forced the other teams to chase him, whilst Delgado could remain in their slipstream. When Delgado's opponents were suitably weakened, he then launched his counter-attack, dragging away Le Monde and Gianni Bugno. Indiran was already tired, having been in the front of the race for so long. But when his leader caught him on the road to Alp d'Huez, he dug even deeper into his reserves, placed Delgado to the foot of the Alp in the best possible position. Delgado even returned the favour by getting Indiran a drink from the team car. Indiran buried himself along the Long Valley Road with no thought of his own overall placing, which he sacrificed for his team leader. And one other marvellous piece of riding yesterday. Unselfish wasn't the word, the way Robert Miller paced up Ronan Pensek. And Robert will be telling us his own version of that tomorrow in our rest day programme. Let's have a look then at the overall top ten as they face up to this mountain time trial. Ronan Pensek holds on to a 1 minute 28 second lead to Chia Pucci. Can Chia Pucci steal the yellow jersey today? Greg Lamond is now up into third place, but look at this, over nine minutes behind. Eric Berkink is now fourth. Bunyo, the winner yesterday, is fifth. Pedro Delgado is still sixth. Champion of Belgium, Claudio Cricillon, is seventh. Raoul Alcala drops back now to eighth, that's a surprise. Andy Hampson comes up to ninth. And Fabrice Filippo of the Castorama rally team, he's now their top man. He's riding well in tenth place. Now, Delgado won the time trial here two years ago when he was wearing the leader's yellow jersey. And on that occasion, he took almost three minutes out of Ronan Pensek. If he does that sort of ride today, this tour will go towards the Pyrenees, wide open. Let's have a look at the route. Almost all the way uphill from Fontaine, going right up here to Cote 2000, just above Villard de Lens. And here we can start with the arrival of Miguel Indurain, who's challenging the best time set so far by the earlier starter, Reno Montoya of Colombia. And it looks like Indurain has got some of his strength back from yesterday because he's going to have a go at a real good time here. He was fastest down the course, and there it is, 57 minutes, 35 seconds. So that's the time to beat. And this is the back of Robert Miller. One of the stars of Alp Duez yesterday, he rode so well up the slopes at such a great speed in favour of his team leader, Ronan Pensek. And you can see the crowds, and believe me, there are a lot of people from Britain on this slope today. We've been talking to a lot of them as we came up in the car. So Miller will be receiving a lot of encouragement. He's not going to do a fast time. He's certainly not going to beat the best time set at the moment by Miguel Indurain. He was, in fact, uh, just over... 45 seconds slower at the 29 kilometer point. Good steady rhythm here set by Robert. He has the triathlete handlebars on, but I'm not too sure whether they will prove to be an advantage today on this long steady slog uphill. But there is also a very strong tailwind through the valley part, and riders are reaching speeds there of 60 and 70 kilometers an hour. So the final few yards, once round the top bend there, Robert Miller will be into the buildings of the finish line at Villard de Long. A massive crowd straining forward to see Robert Miller come through. He's having a great Tour de France, and I'm quite sure that given his chance, we will see a stage victory out of Robert in the week ahead, probably down in the Pyrenees, his favorite hunting ground. But right now, he's a team role to play in this superb Z team this year. Miller, Le Monde and Pentec are three of the strongest riders, but all nine are worth the waiting goal to the squad this year. Almost looks as though Miller slipped a gear there as he came round the right-hander. 
And there's Miller's time at 59.24 and counting. Injuane is in, of course, with the best time so far, 57.35. Robert's not going to get to that, but neither did he set out this morning with the intention of trying to start today. He's playing his role well for the Z team. And we'll see him in the action as we go towards the Pyrenees. So he might just slip inside the hour with a little bit of luck. 150 metres to go and a good finish. Very, very hot conditions up here on the coat. And Robert Miller comes up to the line and he's just gone outside the hour. Look. One hour and three seconds, 18th best at the moment. And this is Fabio Parra and in fact he has caught Sean Kelly for two minutes. Kelly is just behind him out of our camera shot. And Fabio Parra really is coming into this Tour de France after his great ride yesterday that almost uh, brought him up to the leaders on the finish at Alpes He didn't quite make it, but clearly he's having a much better Tour de France than last year when his whole team abandoned the race, including, of course, Parra. Well, just behind Parra is Sean Kelly, and right alongside me right now is Stephen Roach, who rode earlier this morning. Uh, Stephen, first, a little bit about the course out there. How difficult is it today? Um, the course itself is difficult in the, in the sense that you start off with uh, two or three kilometres of flat, but you have kind of a cross headwind in the flat. Then you hit the foot of the hill where you haven't got much wind, but you're going around left, right, left, right, so you have the wind in your face, the wind in your back, the wind in your face, the wind in your back. Yeah. Then you've got about 10 kilometres of kind of flat and false flat. That's why you can see Fabio Parra using his triathlon uh, bars here. It would have been very, very helpful to him, I think, in the uh, open to go over the hill. He's still using them, so it's very unusual to see a Colombian actually riding these bars. Well, this is the situation uh, at the kilometre 23 point. La Jareta has come through there with the best time now, 42.14. So this amazing little Spaniard having a great Tour de France again. He was fifth last year. But we're waiting now for the arrival of Fabio Parra, and it's going to be close. He's right up against Indurain's time of 57.35. I think he'll be lucky to do it. He's got 350 metres to go, but he's going to be very, very close indeed. This is a good return by Fabio Parra. We might well see this rider challenging the leaders in the Tour when we get down to the Pyrenees. It looks like he's refound his old form that made him uh, a great spearhead from Colombia along with Luis Herrera. And he's just an outside Indurain's time. He might get second best if he comes up to the line. But clearly taken a lot of confidence from yesterday's performance on Altura. 57, 50, second best time for Para. Now, Stephen, this brings to probably the $64,000 question. This Tour de France has been a different Tour de France completely to last year. I mean, do you think Pensec can lead all the way? Um, I think since the start of the Tour de France, we've, the journalists and everybody else have given, uh, have made five different favourites. There's Sean Kelly arriving now. Yeah, not a very good time for Sean, Stephen. No. It's not really, but I think you must take into consideration that yesterday Sean rode very hard for Alcala between the, the Colic Landon and Alpe d'Huez. Uh, so, like, I had my bad day yesterday and I didn't do a too good time today, but Sean had a very a different kind of day, a better kind yeah. of day as regards form, but I'm sure he left an awful lot of energy. Like riding in the front for Alcala in the, in the valley. Another man in trouble too from PDM, Uwe Ampler. He's been caught on the road today and he's 141st and there's still plenty more to come in. So, with Stephen Roach already in, he did a very good ride. He was fifth best when he came home. He slipped down a little bit now, but he is coming back to good form in this year's Tour de France. But we'll take a short break and then we will see all of the stars come home. Miguel Indurain still holds the best time, 57 minutes and 35 seconds. Marina Lagiretta has just finished with a time 11 seconds slower. Para in third place and Palacio is fourth. And that race situation, I think, is not going to be altered too much as we watch Raul Alcala come up. The rider who won the time trial so well at Epinal. And he had a terrible day yesterday, losing over five minutes on the climb up the Alps. And it looks to me as though he's suffering because his time is slower at all of the checkpoints. We are hearing some sensational news out on the course, by the way. Pedro Delgado has been setting the best time at all of the checks. And then right behind him is coming Eric Berking. He's bettering the times of Delgado. And there may be a sensation today because Claudio Chiapucci is over a minute ahead of Ronan Pentec on the road. He's looking for just 1 minute 28 seconds to take the yellow jersey. Raul Alcala then is coming up to the line. You can see he's now gone outside the time 
of Miguel Indre, but nonetheless Raul has ridden well over this last section of the course. He's pulled back a little bit of time. He's a long way behind, though, the time checks being set by Birking and Delgado. It looks as though he's going to finish with a time just inside 58 minutes. It'll keep him right on the leaderboard at the moment in seventh place, but that won't be uh, seventh by the time the other riders come up. And here is Pedro Delgado. He's won twice here before. The last time, of course, he went on to win the Tour de France. And he is going to be well inside his teammate Miguel Injuran's time. He's got to the kilometre now. He may be unaware, though, that the rider just behind him, Eric Broikink, is setting times better than him on the road today. And that is a surprise. Broikink already has claimed back the best part of three minutes on the yellow jersey, Ronan Pensek. So this race closing right down today. Pensek could even be going out of the yellow jersey. Well, Delgado's doing a fantastic ride here himself, probably inspired by the fact that he has won here in the past. And using the time set by Miguel Injuran earlier on, because those will have been communicated to him, he'll have an idea of what time he's got to do for the certain parts of the time of the course. We're so getting checked through here at the 23 kilometers, 42.30 for Chiapucci. What we've got to wait for now is the time of Ronan Pensek. And the finish of Pedro Delgado. It's going to be the best time, that's for sure. He's been setting the best times along all of the route, and then you have to wait and see how Broiking comes home. But Pedro Delgado, who is training on the course at 10 o'clock this morning, it's now almost 5 o'clock here in France, and he makes his final run at the line. Yellow jersey here two years ago, and all of the stars are closing in on Ronan Pensek and Claudio Chiapucci. So Delgado now sprints. It's not going to be a lot different to Miguel Indurain's time. He's done very, very well, his teammate, after that ride yesterday in favour of Delgado. But it's going to be the fastest time. The final sprint to the line. As he comes round the corner, he'll see the finishing banner. And a great round of applause. 57-22, best time, Pedro Delgado. So let's have a look at the result as it stands at the moment with, of course, Eric Broiking, Greg LeMond and Pensek and everybody still to finish. Delgado the best time at 57 minutes, 22 seconds. Miguel Indurain at 13 seconds. La Haleta at 24. But for the moment, let's go and have a look at the man who is making the headline news. Here he is, Eric Broiking, who has been setting the best time at every check. And Lamond, Chiapucci and Pensek behind him are not measuring up to the speed he's setting today. And in fact, at this moment, I think Paul Sherwin has calculated that Eric Broiking has gone over Lamond in the overall classification and looks like going into third place today. Yeah, that looks as if that's going to be the situation because uh, Broiking in front of him, he can see that probably that Bunyo isn't far away. So uh, he's, had a, he's had a carrot in front of him to chase all the way up this climb and he's going to steal the jersey. He's, sorry. He's going to steal third place off Greg LeMond, while at the moment we get confirmation there that Chiapucci is the uh, yellow jersey on the road. And here's Gianni Bunyo finishing, and as you can see, his time will be over two minutes, the drift of Delgado's time. Gianni Bunyo, who, by the way, will be racing in Britain in the Wincanton Classic the Sunday after the Tour de France ends in Paris down in Brighton. So... Uh, that should be quite an occasion. Many of the stars here in Britain the week after the Tour de France ends. So Bunyo finishes and his time will not cause a ripple on the leaderboard. But this man's will. Eric Breuking is coming into the finish now. And look at this. He'd almost caught Bunyo for three minutes. So Eric Breuking has brought the crowd here onto their feet and he crosses the line. 56 minutes, 52 seconds. Best time by Eric Breuking. He, I think, will win today. He won the prologue a year ago. Look at the crush now. Somewhere in the middle of that lot is Eric. And now we go out to the see the world champion and, of course, the Tours defending champion, Greg LeMond. His time is almost up to Broikings, and he's still a kilometre or more from the finish, more than a kilometre. In fact, there's the kite just in front. So, Greg LeMond, I think, Paul, you're absolutely right, he's losing his third place. Well, he's losing his third place, and it's amazing to notice he's, he's, used, he's adopted a different kind of bicycle today, not wanting to use those special handlebars because of the nature of the course. LeMond looks to be suffering at the moment. In these time trials in the Tour this year, he really hasn't come up with the goods like he did last year, and he doesn't seem quite to have the power that was there during last year's Tour de France. And he looks to be absolutely labouring, uh, Paul, not like he rode the time trials last year. 
Well, he rode the time trials, of the, even, the, even the mountain time trials in the Tour de France last year quite brilliantly. But this year, Greg really does seem to be suffering. And maybe it's a good good point for the, the Z team that they had that uh, they had Ronan Pentec in the break the first year because maybe Greg LeMond wouldn't have been their top man. And let's have a look at the situation with just three riders to finish. Breaking, 56-52. Delgado, 30 seconds lost today to Eric. Miguel Indurain, third, 43 seconds back. But, of course, he lost his Tour de France yesterday on Alpdurin. These last few yards are so hard. And Le Mans is trying to keep some sort of rhythm here. But he's already gone adrift of Breuking and he's not far off losing now the best part of a minute to Eric on the finish here. Still a little way to go as he slots it into another gear for the final sprint. This has been a hard time trial for Greg LeMond. Yeah, he's even finished outside Delgado's time there, 57.41. Delgado did 57.22, so LeMond's losing a little bit more time to Pedro Delgado. And he comes up to the line, 57.48, almost a minute behind Eric Birking, fifth best at the moment. Chia Pucci, his time against Eric Birking will be nowhere like, won't stand any comparison at all, uh, because Birking has been so far ahead at the check. The more important thing is, how far ahead is he of Pentec? Pentec, 51 minutes, 49 seconds at kilometre 29. Well, at that stage, then, uh, Pontec has lost his yellow jersey for nine seconds, and the gap's going away, but nine seconds on a finishing climb like this isn't a great deal, and Pentec could have been calculating his ride solely on Chiapucci. He'll be getting time checks from team managers who'll be all along the route and re relaying those the information back to the team car, and maybe that's exactly what he's doing. He's trying to pull it back on the climb, but it's a very difficult thing to do. It's much, much better to lead than to lose. Now we can go back and see Ronan Pentec, and Paul, he looks to be absolutely shattered. It looks to me as if Pentec really has blown up. He's taken the pressure for the last couple of days with that yellow jersey. It's probably been too much from him in the past. He's never been one of the best time trialists in the Tour de France. He did a brilliant time trial a few weeks ago to, to keep in the contention. Uh, but today it looks as if it looks as if he really wished he could get off and walk. And look at this, a great spin to upper gear, out of the saddle again, searching for just a handful of seconds that will swing the tour in his favour. It won't be by many. 57, 57, eighth place for Chiapucci. Chiapucci, everybody, uh, everybody forgot about him for a few days, and now he looks as if he may well have come up with the goods. Ronan Pentec, this morning, everybody was saying, well, the Tour de France is over, Pentec yeah. is going to win the Tour, and now it looks as if Pentec may well lose the jersey as we get to the top of the climb here at Côte de Mille. Well, it won't be for lack of encouragement. Look at the crowd. They've enjoyed a marvellous day out because the first ride is coming up here at just before 11 o'clock this morning. So the race has been going on for over six hours. You get full value for your money uh, when there's a time trial in the Tour de France because the riders are coming past you every two or three minutes. And, of course, it's all free. Well, Pentec is about to say goodbye to Yellow. 59.25 is when he will lose the, leader of, the leadership of the Tour de France. There it is. Ronan Pentec is now having to see what he will lose it by. And Claudio Chiapucci of Italy will be the new leader tonight. We've had Thierry Marie in the prologue. He set the trend, funnily enough, today with the best time when he came in. And then we moved across to Steve Bauer. Then it was to Ronan Pentec. And now it's going over to Italy and the Claudio Chiapucci. But this, uh, this time trial today, Phil, really opens up the whole of the Tour de France because uh, uh, Eric Brooking is going to move into third place and he's only going to be seven minutes behind Cla uh, Claudio Chiapucci. So the Tour really is opening itself up again. Pentec goes outside the hour for the long haul up from Fontaine. 300 metres to go. He's suffering all sorts of agonies and he'll be glad when this is over. He slips back to second overall on the classification. Eric Breuking has pulled back almost four minutes on Pentec in this one short time trial today. He will rest somewhere in the area of seven minutes behind the race leader. But it just shows you how these big gaps can tumble in the mountains. And we've got plenty more to come. the link between the Alps and the Pyrenees because they are quite hard as well. 
The crowd applaud Ronan Pentec. Two days in yellow. It's gone now. One hour and 42 seconds for Pentec. He will lose his overall lead in the Tour de France and Claudio Chiapucci will take it. And the effort written all over the face of Ronan Pentec as he sags down uh, just beneath our commentary position on the road. And his grip so weak he couldn't even hold his drinking bottle. So here's the result of the time trial. A win for Eric Berking in 56 minutes and 52 seconds. Pedro Delgado second. He won here two years ago. He was 30 seconds back. Miguel Indurain was third. Marino Lajareta fourth. And Greg LeMond, the defending champion, was fifth. But almost a minute behind the time done by Berking. Claudio Chiapucci finished in eighth place. Well, the melee after the riders finish. You saw it all today. This time Paul Schoen was down with Eric. This morning, everybody was saying that the Tour de France was over, Ronan Pensek was going to win, and today you look like you may have turned the tables upside down. Yeah, I think uh, I knew that I could, uh, could do a good job this day uh, on this time trial, and uh, I don't think the Tour is over. The Tour is over in Paris, and uh, we have uh, the Pyrenees to go, so uh, everybody can have a bad day, and you saw today Pensek is was not good, and... The next day, someone else is uh, it's not good. Are you looking forward to the Pyrenees now? I'm uh, uh, looking forward to tomorrow and it's a rest day and we can rest a little bit. And then after it, the Pyrenees. And I hope I will be uh, in the same condition as uh, which I'm, not, I'm now. So let's have a look now at the overall classification tonight. Changes again. Claudio Chiapucci of Italy. He becomes the first Italian to lead the Tour de France since Francesco Moser won the prologue back in 1975. Pentec goes back to second place, 1 minute 17 seconds down. And Eric Broiking comes up to third, just inside seven minutes behind Chiapucci and closing. In fourth place now, Greg LeMond, and in the top five, Pedro Delgado. Well, as Eric Broiking told us, it is a rest day for the riders tomorrow here in the Tour de France, but not for us. We have an action-packed programme for you beginning at the usual time, 6.30. We'll have a look back over these three great days in the Alps, which have seen three different race leaders. We'll also be out on the slopes of Alpe d'Huez amongst the fans with Gary Imlach. And we'll show you what it's like from a rider's viewpoint to climb into the Sagwagon in the Tour de France, while Robert Miller will describe in his own words how to come up the mountain with the race leader. We'll see you tomorrow night. We do hope you'll join us. Remember, on page 465 on Fortel, you can keep up to date with all.